Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, I'm sorry about the, uh, the glitchiness. Let me go up to gallery view so we can equally share. Cool. You're looking good. Thank you. You doing okay? I'm gonna go get my fur cut later this afternoon, but ah, my 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 lady wife uh, cuts mine, but she charges me. <laughs> oh, the um, uh, is it looks like it's a uh, she uses the razor. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I have well, a, he... I have a man bun back there. You can't see it. <laughs> Oh, okay. One right here too. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I finally it took me uh, back in San Jose. I had a uh, a guy that I went to for I don't know twenty years or more, and uh, took me a couple of trips to find a young lady here to, that was uh, reliable and uh, trustworthy, and uh, so I uh, tried to cultivate her. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. That's a, yeah, I, uh, I ended up dating a couple of my uh, barbers <laughs> <laughs> way back in the day. <laughs> Coming up with a, uh, a book recommendation for autobiographical writing. I don't know if you're interested in that, but. Uh, no, I <laughs> There's nothing, uh, nothing worthwhile writing about. <laughs> well, that's that's uh, that's the biggest hump right there, hurdle you have to get over. But if it's a big enough task to uh, let's put it this way: if you like writing and you like expressing yourself, then it's a fun hobby. If if it's not your cup of tea, forget it. <laughs> it's a giant chore. But, well, I did only one effort like that once on a, when I started up one of my projects that I was running. Um, I started, a, it was a book called um, The Soul of a New Machine. And I can't think of the name of the writer right now, but they embedded a uh, writer in the project that's one of the first, uh, at Data General, one of the first uh, uh, PC manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I read the book, and it was kind of interesting. And, a couple of years before I retired on the project, I decided to, well, maybe I'll just kind of write a story as if I'm documenting what we did. And I, I wrote about 14 pages of it. And I had showed it to my boss and he was impressed, but we got to talking about it. And uh, he said, you know, GE, you need to go probably take this past GE legal and see if they're, you know, <laughs> if they have any problems with you doing something like this, because it, really? it discussed uh, things about, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, and oh. what we were doing and things like that. And they said, I said, well, you know, maybe I better go ahead and just <laughs> shit can the idea. To, and I did. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't want a libel suit when a technical manual, <laughs> <laughs> but so, anyway. if it's the truth, it's the truth. And yeah, and well, sometimes you just don't want that uh, to be, uh, you know, become an issue for other people. You know, they may, yeah. They may not, people they may not perceive it, things the same way you do. And so. That's right. That's right. Even though, you know, it wasn't, it was just an, total, an accounting of pretty much what the project was about. And the right. people were just a, kind of incidental, but that's neither, you know, they didn't well, want, I still didn't want to get in trouble or get anybody else in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, what, what I ran across, then let me, uh, let me just practice this a second and I'm going to, you, you've shared a screen on Zoom before. And thank you, by the way, for dropping by. You're, you're a really good moderator, so I would like to uh, uh, have you label me as co-host. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, Janice Jan just got a big chuckle when you said that. <laughs> well, wait a minute, Janice. We have we we have an invitation out to all the wives, because because uh, some of our super classmates here have super duper uh, spouses. Hello. 
Hi there. You know what? I'm going to pass. <laughs> I have my own life. Party <laughs> pooper. <laughs> Yeah, we had just finished eating lunch out on the patio, so I, I... Yeah, well, that's smart. Yeah, I just I just got home and dumped all the groceries. So. Oh, every now and then I have to get out and go grocery shopping. You, you see... What? Have you shared your screen on Zoom um, too many times? <laughs> well, yeah. You mean in terms of uh, uh, sh uh, letting the person see what you, the other yeah. thing you have, like a written book or yeah. some notes yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Yes, I've yeah. done that before. Yeah. Well, this one, uh, I just, I'm going to pull it out because this is being recorded. This is for other people, and I'm, but I'm showing you. Let me just show you this the cover of this book. And um, let me see here, Kindle. What I'm doing is I'm bringing up my, my Kindle. Right, yeah, I see it. And, 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 and I want to go back to the, where the hell, uh, supposed to say cover, yeah. And I'm going to do this. Okay. So there's the cover. And the, let me see, copyright page. This thing was copyrighted, or it's fourth edition, but somewhere in here it told me <laughs> that it was uh, 1999. Yeah, let's see. Oh, 90. she wrote it in 80, revised it, 85, 91, 97. Okay, I was wrong. So, you know, this book is, is like, 23 years old or more. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. So the, uh, but really the, the messages uh, really stand the test of time. The only thing that I thought was really funny was that she wrote it when PCs were just being introduced. And uh, I'm coming back to our screen. And uh, so <clears throat> she's talking about a, a a memory notebook where you have you know you have to use paper and pencil or she said you can use a typewriter <laughs> but she did mention in her introduction computers but she apparently was not a computer person uh, at that point so <laughs> We, uh, when GE first got the uh, computers coming in for the uh, engineering group, the, um, at first they just were using them for word processors and the secretaries had them. Yep. And uh, then I, at that point in time, I decided that I would uh, learn how to type marginally well. And I went and borrowed, well, I found a typewriter in, in the pool of people where they did the O&M manuals and he let me have it. And I, I took it back and then I found the little flip notebook that my mother had from business school in 1923 or something <laughs> like that. And uh, where you type A, 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 B, 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 you know, so on and so forth. The cat ran over the dog or car ran over the dog. And uh, <laughs> so I started practicing uh, typing first just to type practice and then I started sending typed notes up to my manager and then my manager's manager and finally the, to the section manager. And uh, just to, so I feel comfortable doing it. And when they finally got them machines in, I was one of the, luckily I was one of the first people that they, they, uh, they had them, uh, got one. And I, I, I was, it was well used when I finally relinquished it. Yeah, I'm sorry, you, what was well used? The, the uh, computer was well used when I finally got rid of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how long did you have it? Well, I had it, well, like, so I'm trying to, I think I got it back in, let's see. We moved over to that building in 85, 84. So, so, so I think it was like 1985. 
So, so you, you said you got a typewriter and you practiced typing, but well, I think what you meant was you, you got yourself a personal computer. Well, no, no, I got a typewriter uh, before that, probably in about 82 or 83, was they introduced some uh, word processing units to the, oh. uh, and for the secretaries. And I thought, well, it's not going to be long before they become available to the engineering right. staff. Right. And so I thought I may as well learn how to type now. Good, um, good. So, um, so th did they give you a dumb terminal at first and everybody? No, no it was a, a PC. standalone, standalone PC. Yeah. It was a, what, what they used to call a 3270. It yeah. was about, it was not as smart as your, our phones are. By any right. Anyone's imagination. Right. Well, I have, I have a similar story. Um, uh, when we were at Surrattsville, my mother, suggested I take a typing class during summer school and I was horrible. I just ah was terrible. So but I I did learn what the QWERTY keyboard was. <laughs> and and so later on, after I'd gotten out of the military and got into city planning, I uh and in let's see I started in Albany, Georgia in, um, let me think, uh, 75 or thereabouts. I'm sure my dates are wrong because I don't, I don't, I don't have landmarks in yet. Even for a guy who's writing his life story, he just can't remember. Anyway, point being that I had a secretary, I had a series of secretaries and they, were very good on the um, the electric typewriter. Then we had an accountant who uh, said, "Oh, let's get a PC." Well, that was for the head secretary, and and so I didn't have to type. All I had to do was scribble out some stuff and give it to the typist. And when I left that job and went to Florida, uh, Lee County, Florida, where they had a uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what they call. <laughs> uh, anyway, I had a dumb terminal. They made me re type all my own reports, and I it was just horrible because I was slow, and I kept changing things. It was cool because I I anyway, but we would have to go and spend time in the county commission meetings, or the city commission meeting. I guess county commission meeting, and just sit there and wait to give a report. So I went to Kmart and bought, that. you'll love this, it was a word processor. It had an LED screen that was 80 characters long. <laughs> so I could type one sentence at a time, or 80 characters. <laughs> and then, and then it, you had, what was cool is it had a uh, a heat transfer printer incorporated with it. So I could be in the library typing away, but I'd have to print out whatever it was that I was typing in order to keep it in my short-term memory. That was horrible, but it had, it had multiple keyboards, which was really fantastic. So I learned a lot about the word processing input at that time. So my my boss, see, nobody had laptops. Everybody had a dumb terminal back at the office, and here I am typing away, in in the county commission meeting. She told me, "You look like a dork. Don't bring that, you know, to the <laughs> to the meeting." And now everybody does it. I'm just years ahead of my time. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so anyway, uh, let's see. I went from there to uh, Sarasota and of course I had a I had a, a, a I guess you call it a desktop and had to type my own report so I got a lot better that way but I found out my left hand is faster than my right and I make a lot of mistakes <laughs> well I, I my left hand is the 10 dumbest characters and five dumbest characters in the world <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
I'm not very well. I don't do very well with my left hand. Mm. Do much better. And I've never, never been able to master doing the numbers with my, uh, without looking up there and yeah. looking at one finger. The keypad. Yeah. I, I, my wife can do that. And, and, and a lot of people who work in banks can do that. Our accountant could do that. And I was very, very much impressed. <laughs> I, I wanted to share with you and anybody who watches this, one of my favorite memories. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to go down the, ga the gamut here. Um, do you remember when I used to come to your house in the winter time and we would play army and we would have little toy soldiers? Oh yeah. And do you remember what we did with our winter coats? Mm. Not really, no. We used to we used to lean them up in the corner or against the wall, and use the sleeves as tunnels. Oh well, yeah, I guess I sort of vaguely remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. the 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 other The other thing I remember. Um, uh, do you like cooked carrots? Um, I like yes. buttered carrots. You yeah, like cooked carrots. carrots. Yeah. Butter. Yeah. Do you, Do you cook them in the pressure cooker like your mom? No. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know. Your your mother was a sweetheart, but I I I I remember when I got invited to your house for lunch and your mother would be cooking for us at lunchtime. I go, what the hell is this? I mean, all we wanted all we need is a sandwich, you know. I, she's cooking good food for you, right? So Well, uh, <laughs> there's the is there a story behind that? <laughs> we put it this way. She was uh, not the world's best cook. <laughs> oh, really? Well. And, and, and you probably saw her at her, at her highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Highest point, her, her, her zenith, right? But, yeah. but hey, she mastered the pressure cooker. And uh, we got good soft carrots for lunch. Yeah. I'm I, trying I, to remember, I, yeah. uh, speaking of, you know, Made, uh, doing things in the in the house. Were you party to the big elect uh, when I used to have a, um, not a, a well, it's not a ticker toy set, but the erector set. The erector set. Uh, we used to uh, put uh, build up a gigantic thing in the living room that was with ropes that well, you know, pieces of string that went all across the living room. Is that with you or Vincent Orndorff? Uh, uh, probably Orndorff because um, I would have remembered that. I love erector sets. But I, I, I didn't have enough engineering mentality to... Uh, yeah, I guess it must have been Vincent why we, we would set up uh, uh, like little uh, bri uh, bridges and then we'd have uh, ropes that carry stuff from one side of the room to the other and little buckets and things like that. Well, now I'm really hurt, Dave. You didn't invite me over to, <laughs> okay. to play with that. <laughs> oh. How old were you then? I have no, I, no clue. 10 or 12, probably. Probably 18. <laughs> well, no, it's more like 25. No, I mean, probably, more, probably more like 10. Yeah. When, when did you know that you wanted to be an engineer? Well, I'm not really sure that I ever really knew that. Um, I, uh, I guess I, when I applied to Virginia Tech, I guess, I, well, I, I was always interested in science related things. Um, and I guess it would just kind of, and when I was looking at the catalog of things of where to apply or what curriculums to apply to, I, I guess I just kind of gradually navigated to that. So I would guess probably 10th grade, maybe 10th, 11th, 10th, 11th grade. And then um, the uh, story goes, I got, when I got accepted to Virginia Tech, um, it was in aerospace engineering. And then uh, I was there about two weeks and I really that was not getting along with my advisor. And I decided, well, I really want to go over and be an architect instead. And so I uh, went, 
to stand by the door and um, it was raining outside and I didn't want to run outside in the rain to the other building. And then the Dean of the mechanical engineering department came out and I, so I said, Hey, you want me to be a mechanical engineer? And he said, yeah, he took me to be my new advisor. And so uh, <laughs> I ended up uh, uh, doing it that way, but you know, I, I guess it turned out quite well. Um, I would have enjoyed being in the architecture related fields. Um, oddly enough, uh, my, you know, John Lark, you know, I, he went uh, on to become a good uh, an architect in St. Louis there. And my roommates through college all were started off in architecture and some of them ended up in um, uh, related curriculums. And, um, and I've, but I've always been um, gravitated towards that. Janice has her uh, bachelor's degree in interior design from San Jose State. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always been, always enjoyed being around people who are uh, in the art related fields. So. Art, art and mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I guess wish... I like that because it's something I can't do real well, <laughs> but I appreciate. Well, it's, it's something that you can learn, but it takes a lot of practice. It's very time consuming. And some people have an innate quality. My son, Wesley, who's getting ready to turn 50, um, he was drawing from a very, very early age. And one day we were watching a football game on TV. Next thing I know, he's out on the front porch drawing the football game, including spikes on the, on the shoes of the players. I mean, that's how detailed and he would, he liked to play D and D and uh, he would get the little, uh, uh, not lead, what do they call them? Uh, pewter figurines like this big and he would get a little tiny paintbrush and paint he would take a, a little shield like that and paint a design on the shield even though yeah. the sh shield was only a quarter inch wide and so uh yeah he's really detail oriented uh i i wish i could have uh i guess had the courage and the math skills or, or maybe even just the arithmetic skills to um, to become a, a mechanical engineer. Uh, I there's so much of what I do and the way I think is is a concrete sequential and uh, very mechanically. That that's where I go first. Is I want to know the mechanics. I even I even taught myself the mechanics of Christianity. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of a, a, a fun background. So are you, are you ready? Are you ready for the, the big the big memory for me? Okay, the, I'll the, give it a shot. The big David Falstitch memory. Well, I, look, right before that, that was a teaser. Right before that, I remembered <clears throat> you you played uh, defensive halfback, right? As well as as well as a uh, uh, halfback as a bulker. cornerback. Cornerback. Corner. Okay. Yeah. In the five four, Oklahoma defense, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember you saying to me. Uh, I ask you something about, do you wear your glasses in your helmet? And you said, no. Is that, is that correct? You didn't wear your glasses in your helmet? No, no I could still forage for food without them. <laughs> but but I, 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 kept, I kept going. You know, I said, well, how do you see a, a, a pass that's coming in your direction? You, and I think you, you were saying it's a little blur up there coming my way. <laughs> is, that, uh, is that correct? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. But I, you know, the reality is my eyesight really isn't all that bad. Or back oh. then, it wasn't all that bad. Oh, I good. Mean, I could still I could still see quite well. Oh, you know, good. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I have to admit, though, um, do you recall when we played at Duval High School? 
and uh, you and I were the, the you, we, you were on the, usually the left-hand side of the kicker. I was on the right-hand side, and we were the only two that got to go chase the ball, and everybody else had to run down in the zone. Do you remember we, did we tackled oh, one and guy and, and put him down really bad? I think it was Duval High School. Yeah, well, I, I don't remember it. that. I, I was the kicker. Tip oh, we were, okay, most were. off most often. Now, given it could have been Tommy Lindahl, it could have been Tommy, but but I can't. Rem, I don't remember what year that was. It was, would have been in the the eleventh grade. Would have been in the I don't, maybe the tenth grade. Tenth grade, yeah. Yeah, well, no, I wasn't the kicker in the tenth grade. Because did you know what happened that time on that play? Uh, you and I tackled the guy. I got a concussion that was so bad Ooh. that I did not wake up until they started the next play. Mm. I was walking around the field. You were going in circles. Going to, and uh, the next thing I, I next thing I remember was uh, uh, Tubner played defensive end on the left hand side, and I played the left cornerback. And uh, when I came to, they had just started running a play around the left hand side, and and luckily Chuck knocked the guy down and I thought you know because I was I, and then then I went I went I went over to the bench and told the coach to pull me out well, I, and I, I, I was out completely walking around nobody seemed to notice anything how uh, was your vision I, if I, if I, I don't recall I remember it was I was I remember we tackled him and I didn't remember anything at all until um they started the next play up oh wow so you were out for a minute. Yeah, I was walking around, you know, yeah. apparently nobody yeah. seemed to notice that, you know, yeah. I was kind of glazed, <laughs> just kind of glazing. And uh, um, that's uh, as a result of that, uh, and one other concussion and one I had when I was racing a bike. And, oh, wow. and I, I told the kids that, uh, uh, hey, football, you, you're not going to play football. Mm. Don't, don't even think about it. <laughs> and, uh, because uh, I decided that was not, it was not, not worth it for them. Dangerous, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had too many damaged pieces parts over the, that's come to haunt me over the years that yeah. as a result of playing football. Well, you know where I got my most serious concussion? The Jellif Boys Club playing basketball. Oh, wow. I, I dove for a ball. Can you, I can't believe I did that. I dove for a ball on, on a McAdam heart a smooth macadam. Oh, that was hard. Anyway, I hit my head on a guy's knee. And, and wait a minute, what's this? Oh, okay. Um, the, they had lights. It was at night. We were playing at night and the, the lights were really bright, but they were, my eyes must have been dilated because I couldn't see anything but lights all over the place. And I uh, I got I said, Coach, I I can't I can't see, and he said, Well, come over. You know. Anyway, I talked to the guy in the locker room whose knee I crashed into. He couldn't walk. <laughs> <laughs> it was poor guy. I think I probably crippled him for life with my hard head. But um, I've had trouble with word recall for for a long time. <laughs> okay, yeah, here's yeah. the. Here's the big. Go ahead. Go on. Go I was on. I was gonna say here's the big Dave Falstitch memory for me. You you ran track, right? Right. Bobby Vaughn was the coach. Terrible track coach, yes. Oh well, he we had a coach, right? Yeah, we had a coach. We got to, okay. we got to do it. Yeah. So you ran the two twenty, right? Correct. What else did you run? I ran the one ten and the. Well, let's see. I ran 220 as an individual. I, I got to run the 110 a couple of times, but usually had to be part of a relay. And then we ran a 330. You were on the 440 time. relay, right? And I ran a 440 relay and I ran a 440 <laughs> individual a couple of times. Well, what I remember was, and the, for the people who don't translate those distances, a 220 is halfway around a quarter mile track. Correct. And you were running on cinders and you were, you were running, I, I don't I mean, track season in Maryland must have been in the springtime 
Correct. Yeah. And it probably was May or June, April, May, June. And I'm sure it was pretty hot and still. And you sprinted the entire 220. And you won, as I recall. But when you came off the track, I, I was afraid to get too close to you because you would have sucked me up <laughs> into <laughs> your lung. You were, <gasps> and, and you were bent over. And this is what I, I, I really liked. I, and I was about to tease you. Bobby Vaughn came over and held you by the hips just to make sure you didn't fall down. And he says, don't you dare criticize him. Don't you dare tease him because he was impressed. Well, I took, I think, only maybe three breaths in a 220. <laughs> and because uh, a one, 110, I ran, I think, probably about 80 yards on the first breath and then took one more. Um, the 220, yeah, 220. So I was trying to remember, like the fastest I ever ran was, was 22.4, which was, um, it's still a respectable time now, even these, these day and age. Um, the, uh, it would have been enough to put me in, uh, on the track team at Virginia Tech, but uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to go out there and spend all those extra hours to, yeah. to, do, yeah. to, to don't do all that running around. Yeah. You know, Dave, if... Go ahead. I was going to say, the, I did have one other concussion a few years ago, and that was uh, when I was racing a bike and went around a corner and uh, did an indo and broke my helmet into four places and broke my collarbone. and uh, oh, Head over uh, heels? Yeah. That's and, an indo, uh, huh? <laughs> yeah. It was not, it was not fun. Mm -mm. And what did you hit? I mean, what, you had a helmet ground, on. Ground. You, oh, you hit the ground. On your oh, head? Yeah, went, right, went, yeah, went straight over the handlebars. Oh, the, wow. Turned, because they, the, the, they, the, we, the front end of the bike basically turned sideways and yeah. as a result of it. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of, so I've, uh, I get after people all the time when I'm riding a bike who's not wearing a helmet. Uh, yeah. You, I tell them, hey, you need to yeah. get a helmet. Especially yeah. if I see a, a, a woman or husband or wife riding with their kids. I said, yeah. you really want to have, see your kids uh, 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 from a hospital bed where you can't move for the rest of your life? Yeah. Fly home, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have, I have two stories in that regard. <clears throat> see if I can, oh yeah. Um, the first one is in memory of Ellis McElroy. And not, not too many years ago, when he was living in, in Wilmington, close to the beach, um, Judy and I asked if we could come and stay with him for a night or two to, to visit and to allow us to see Wilmington. And he said, oh yeah, come on up. And they were, he and his wife were very gracious and fed us and gave us a nice place to, to sleep. And uh, we reminisced and one of his proudest, proudest possessions was his football helmet from Surrattsville that was cracked and split open right here. And he said, Walker, you did that. <laughs> I'm, I have, what? <laughs> so that, that's, uh, that's number one. Number two, in competition with your Indo, 1964, or after the 64 football season, the summer of, I guess, 65, uh, I had a, a beautiful blonde girlfriend, and she was going to meet us at Ocean City. And I drove I, from one of my uh, uh, freshman coaches, a young guy, I bought a Vespa motor scooter and it tops. It would do 55 miles an hour cruise at 50. So it was three and a half grueling hours from Clinton to ocean city. And so 
Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I just had to. Okay, that's all right. I'll keep. I'll continue. Check something. Uh, yeah, because I, I have to. I have to go leave for a haircut here in a few minutes. Okay. Well, I'll finish up this story. Anyway, I get to Ocean City. I'm driving down the dual lane highway. Uh, I'm driving slow because I'm not sure where I am, maybe 40 miles an hour. It's a gray day. There, I'm on a gray motor scooter, moving slow. There's a gray house behind me, and there's a guy in a Thunderbird in the middle of the highway trying to get across. He didn't see me, <laughs> uh, and I hit his front fender, and the tail end of that scooter lifted me up and over his Ooh. hood. And I rolled, I smashed my pinky and chipped my kneecap. Ooh. And so, uh, but I, I was just a little bit winded. That's it. So you taking off? Yeah, well, I'm just kind of preparing to take off here. I have to bring this stuff in from the patio and I, so I kind of wander, <laughs> wander around the house here. That's, <laughs> Luckily, that's what you can do when you don't have to have a, when, you got, when you're on your iPad. Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you, uh, you want to uh, meet me here next week? Do you have time? Uh, you know, I think I have something else going on next Thursday, so I okay. probably, won't, uh, probably okay. won't be in there. Well, I'll see if I can dig up another co-host. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm threatening to bring my wife on. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, listen, I need to get going here. All right. Thank you, Dave. It's good talking well, it's to nice, you. Yeah, nice talking to you too. We'll I love see your ya. stories. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Well, we've taken up almost forty-two minutes. I think what I'm going to do is record some other stuff separately. And uh, we will see you down the road. Bye-bye.